Blessings and hallelujah, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is truly a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, hallelujah. Well, friends, today we are continuing our study on the book of First Enoch, and we are beginning a section that is entitled the astronomical section of the book of First Enoch. Now remember, the, the book of 1st Enoch is broken down into five segments, and the next 10 chapters that we're going to discuss are way out of my league. Now, much of this is just going to be a reading of the book of Enoch, but I will provide commentary and biblical passages as I can and as is necessary. So if you have the book of 1st Enoch open in front of you, and I have provided a link below, you can follow along with us. Let's begin in chapter 72 and verse 1. The book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven, the relations of each according to their classes, their dominion, and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, and according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel who was with me, who is their guide, showed me, and he showed me all their laws exactly as they are and how it is with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. Now, when he says till the new creation is accomplished, he's speaking of the new world to come, the recreation of the heavens and the recreation of the earth. In verse two, he says, and this is the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven, and its setting in the western portals of the heaven. And I saw six portals in which the sun rises, and six portals in which the sun sets, and the moon rises and sets in these portals, and the leaders of the stars, and those whom they lead, six in the east, and six in the west, and all following each other in accurately corresponding order also many windows to the right and left of these portals. And first there goes forth the great luminary named the sun, and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire. The chariot on which he ascends, the wind drives, and the sun goes down from the heaven and returns through the north in order to reach the east and is so guided that he comes to the appropriate, literally that portal, and shines in the face of the heaven. In this way, he rises in the first month in the great portal, which is the fourth those six portals in the cast. And in that fourth portal from which the sun rises in the first month are twelve window openings, from which proceed a flame when they are opened in their season. When the sun rises in the heaven, he comes forth through that fourth portal thirty mornings in succession, and sets accurately in the fourth portal in the west of the heaven. And during this period the day becomes daily longer, and the night nightly shorter to the thirtieth morning. On that day the day is longer than the night by a ninth part, and the day amounts exactly to ten parts, and the night to eight parts." And the sun rises from that fourth portal, and sets in the fourth, and returns to the fifth portal of the east thirty mornings, and rises from it, and sets in the fifth portal. And then the day becomes longer by two parts, and amounts to eleven parts, and the night becomes shorter, and amounts to seven parts. And it returns to the east, and enters into the sixth portal, and rises and sets in the sixth portal, one and thirty mornings on account of its sign. On that day, the day becomes longer than the night, and the day becomes double the night, and the day becomes twelve parts, and the night is shortened and becomes six parts. And the sun mounts up to make the day shorter and the night longer, and the sun returns to the east and enters into the sixth portal, and rises from it and sets thirty mornings. And when thirty mornings are accomplished, the day decreases by exactly one part and becomes eleven parts, and the night seven. And the sun goes forth from that sixth portal in the west, and goes to the east, and rises in the fifth portal for thirty mornings, and sets in the west again in the fifth western portal. 
On that day, the day decreases by two parts and amounts to ten parts and the night to eight parts. And the sun goes forth from that fifth portal and sets in the fifth portal of the west and rises in the fourth portal for the one and thirty mornings on account of its sign and sets in the west. On that day, the day is equalized with the night and becomes of equal length. And the night amounts to nine parts and the day to nine parts. And the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west, and returns to the east and rises thirty mornings in the third portal, and sets in the west in the third portal. And on that day the night becomes longer than the day, and night becomes longer than night, and day shorter than day till the thirtieth morning. And the night amounts exactly to ten parts, and the day to eight parts. And the sun rises from that third portal and sets in the third portal in the west and returns to the east. And for thirty morning rises in the second portal in the east and in like manner sets in the second portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day the night amounts to eleven parts and the day to seven parts. And the sun rises on that day from that second portal and sets in the west in the second portal and returns to the east into the first portal for one and thirty mornings, and sets in the first portal in the west of the heaven. And on that day the night becomes longer and amounts to the double of the day, and the night amounts exactly to twelve parts, and the day to six. And the sun has therewith traversed the divisions of his orbit, and turns again on those divisions of his orbit, and enters that portal thirty mornings, and sets also in the west opposite to it. And on that night has the night decreased in length by a ninth part, and the night has become eleven parts, and the day seven parts. And the sun has returned and entered into the second portal in the east, and returns on those his divisions of his orbit for thirty mornings rising and setting. And on that day the night decreases in length, and the night amounts to ten parts, and the day to eight. And on that day the sun rises from that portal and sets in the west, and returns to the east, and rises in the third portal for one and thirty mornings, and sets in the west of the heaven. On that day the night decreases and amounts to nine parts, and the day to nine parts. And the night is equal to the day, and the year is exactly as to its days, three hundred and sixty-four. And the length of the day and of the night, and the shortness of the day and of the night arise, through the course of the sun, these distinctions are made, or literally they are separated. So it comes that its course becomes daily longer and its course nightly shorter. And this is the law in the course of the sun. And his return as often as he returns sixty times and rises, meaning the great luminary which is named the sun forever and ever. And that which thus rises is the great luminary and is so named according to its appearance, according as the Lord commanded. As he rises, so he sets and decreases not, and rests not, but runs day and night, and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. But as regards size, they are both equal. Chapter 73 And after this law I saw another law dealing with the smaller luminary which is named the moon. And her circumference is like the circumference of the heaven, and her chariot in which she rides is driven by the wind. The light is given to her in definite measure, and her rising and setting change every month. And her days are like the days of the sun, and when her light is uniform or full, it amounts to the seventh part of the light of the sun. And thus she rises, and her first phase in the east comes forth on the thirtieth morning. And on that day she becomes visible, and constitutes for you the first phase of the moon on the thirtieth day together with the sun in the portal where the sun rises. And the one half of her goes forth by a seventh part, and her whole circumference is empty without light with the exception of one seventh part of it and the fourteenth part of her light. And when she receives one seventh part of the half of her light, her light amounts to one seventh part and the half thereof. And she sets with the sun, and when the sun rises, the moon rises with him, and receives the half of one part of light, 
And in that night, in the beginning of her morning, in the commencement of the lunar day, the moon sets with the sun and is invisible that night with the 14 parts and the half of one of them. And she rises on that day with exactly a seventh part and comes forth and recedes from the rising of the sun. And in her remaining days, she becomes bright in the remaining 13 parts. Now, before we begin chapter 74, I think there's something interesting here that should have stood out to you. In verse four of this chapter that we've just read, it says, and thus she rises. But in chapter 72, verse 35, it says, this is the law in the course of the sun and his return as often as he returns 66 times. Now, due to the fact that we don't have the time to do a lengthy study on what I am about to say, I want to be as delicate as I possibly can, but at the same time, I want to be true to scripture. There is a hierarchy in the spiritual world. We have the Father, we have the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. Beneath this spiritual hierarchy, we have man. And according to the Bible, we have man, we have wife, and we have children. Now the children answer to the wife and the husband, the parents, and are to be submissive in that relationship. The wife is to be submissive in her relationship to the husband. The husband is to be submissive in his relationship to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is submissive in his relationship to the Son, Jesus, Jesus is to be submissive to his relationship to the Father. Now, I know that in this world that we live in of political correctness, and more specifically of equal rights, that this is not a popular message. But whether it's popular or not, friends, this is the message of the Bible. And I say all of that to say I find it very interesting that even in man's relationship to the triune God, and within the triune God himself, there is still a level of submissiveness according to each individual. And yet we see in our reading that the female characteristic is the moon. And the moon is pictured as the weaker vessel to the sun. And the sun takes the more masculine role in being called he. And I want to point that out because that's certainly true. In the relationship of the sun and the moon, the moon is the weaker vessel. They each serve a specific purpose, just as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, just as man, woman, and child. And God has called each of them to serve according to what he has created them to be. But the designation is very clear whether we're talking about the triune God, whether we're talking about men upon earth, men, women, and children, or whether we're talking about these heavenly celestial structures such as the planets, the sun, and the moon specifically. Chapter 74, and I saw another course, a law for her and how according to that law she performs her monthly revolution, still speaking of the moon here. And all these, Uriel, the holy angel, who is the leader of them all, showed to me and their positions, and I wrote down their positions as he showed them to me, and I wrote down their months as they were, and the appearance of their lights till fifteen days were accomplished. In single seventh parts, she accomplishes all her light in the east, and in single seventh parts accomplishes all her darkness in the west. And in certain months, she alters her settings. And in certain months, she pursues her own peculiar course. In two months, the moon sets with the sun. In those two middle portals, the third and the fourth, she goes forth for seven days and turns about and returns again through the portal where the sun rises and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes from the sun and in eight days enters the sixth portal from which the sun goes forth. And when the sun goes forth from the fourth portal, she goes forth seven days, until she goes forth from the fifth and turns back again in seven days into the fourth portal and accomplishes all her light. And she recedes and enters into the first portal 
in eight days. And she returns again in seven days into the fourth portal from which the sun goes forth. Thus I saw their position, how the moons rose and the sun set in those days. And if five years are added together, the sun has an overplus of 30 days. And all the days which accrue to it for one of those five years, when they are full, amount to 364 days. And the overplus of the sun and of the stars amounts to six days. In five years, six days, every year come to 30 days. And the moon falls behind the sun and stars to the number of 30 days. And the sun and the stars bring in all the years exactly so that they do not advance or delay their position by a single day unto eternity, but complete the years with perfect justice in 364 days. In three years, there are 1,092 days, and in five years, 1,820 days, so that in eight years, there are 2,912 days. For the moon alone, the days amount in three years to 1,062 days. And in five years, she falls 50 days behind, meaning to the sum of 1,770, there is to be added 1,062 days. And in five years, there are 1,770 days. So that for the moon, the days in eight years amount to 2,832 days. For in eight years, she falls behind to the amount of 80 days. All the days she falls behind in eight years are 80. And the year is accurately completed in conformity with their world stations and the stations of the sun, which rise from the portals through which it, the sun, rises and sets 30 days. Now, if you're still with us at this point, I understand how monotonous how confusing and maybe even how boring this reading can be. Maybe kind of like reading the book of Leviticus or Numbers or Chronicles. But we have to understand that in the mind of the mighty God, there is a specific purpose for these writings. And if anything, what we should take from this, that God has perfectly designed with intricate measure exactly the order of this world that we live in. He has taken great care in planning that everything works exactly the way it was created to work. And this not only includes the luminaries, the celestial and terrestrial beings of heaven, but this includes us, friends. We have been designed and created with the same care, with the same level of planning. I mean, the human body itself is so complex that it has baffled those who study the human body for thousands of years. And yet the same God that created our human bodies is the same God who created the luminaries in the heaven and designed them and planned them to perform in such strategic detail as what we have seen today. Well, I'll leave you there, friends. The next time we're together, we'll pick up in chapter 75. And until then, and as Yahweh wills, I love you and I'll see you on the next video.